Hello everybody, welcome to Canvas tutorial. Uh, I am Orindam and I am here with the Great Crash Course 2021. This is the NAT type of lecture that means the numerical answer type of questions will be discussed over here. It is the lecture number one and over here we are going to discuss about the chemical kinetics. Okay. Now if you follow my channel then you can easily identify that in my previous lecture I have given you uh, all the important formulas on this chapter. And I have already given uh, the approach towards the NAT in another lecture. So now you can get the link of these two lectures in the description box below. So before watching this video, you can click on that link and you can watch them first. Okay, so let's begin with our first question. What does it actually say? So in this case, you can see that if the thermal decomposition reaction of nitrosyl halide over here you can see it's a NOCl nitrosyl chloride okay occurs by the following pathway 2NOCl forming 2NO plus Cl2 and the pre-exponential factor of the expression of the rate constant uh, from the Arrhenius equation you can see that k is equals to a into e to the power minus kt okay so that is Arrhenius equation and A was nothing but your pre-exponential constant or pre-exponential factor. So that value of A is already given to you and the activation energy is 104 kilojoule per mole. Then at 300 Kelvin temperature, what is the value of enthalpy change? Okay, for the activation step of the reaction according to activated complex theory. So in this question what are the points you actually get from this statement so these are some points which i have already noted over here that given reaction is gaseous reaction if you follow the reaction is basically uh, the reactant is gaseous and also products are gaseous so it is overall a gaseous reaction okay this is first impression now point is that for gaseous reaction delta h is equals to delta e plus p delta v thermodynamical um, expression now delta E is nothing but your internal energy or energy in fact and P delta V you can write it in the form of delta NRT assuming that all the gases behave ideally okay. So over here this delta N delta N is number of mole of product minus number of mole of reactant. So the third point is the activated complex theory what does it actually say I have already um, given you the idea about the activated complex theory uh, in my previous lectures you can follow the link will be uh, provided in the description box you can click there you can check from there now point is that it is basically saying that reactant is converted into a single activated complex which is basically you can think that it is a transition state and uh, it is in equilibrium with that transition state so it, uh, it has equilibrium constant k dagger and now from that transition state or the activated complex you are getting the product now for the activation state that means the, this is the first step which is the equilibrium step the delta n dagger delta n dagger means number of mole of uh, change in the number of mole over here activated complex is a single entity and in this case reactant has um, two mole of the NOCl gas so uh, reactant n reactant will be two and n product is one so overall delta n dagger is minus 1 putting the formula of delta n dagger into this formula you are getting it is delta e dagger minus rt now in my previous class i have said that delta e dagger for activated complex theory uh, is nothing but ea minus rt okay so uh, these all formulas will have already been provided on in my previous lecture uh, was that first so it will be understandable to you so it is ea minus rt so overall it is a ea minus 2 rt so overall the value of enthalpy change delta h dagger is equals to ea minus 2 rt so this is your final expression and you need to put the values you can see the activation energy ea is already given 104 kilojoule per mole r is nothing but your uh, 8.314 joule per mole inverse kelvin inverse and t is 300 kelvin so just put them and you will find your answer 99011.6 uh, in the joule per mole inverse unit okay because over here joule per mole inverse unit uh, they have asked so you have to convert the unit uh, the ea is given in the kilojoule so you have to convert it into joule one kilojoule is nothing but 10 to the power 3 joule clear 
fine so let's move on to our second question it says that if the viscosity of heptane is 0.65 centipoise and the diffusion control rate constant for the recombination of iodine okay so it actually asks the diffusion control rate constant of the recombination of iodine atoms in heptane medium at 300 kelvin so what will be the value of that in the unit of decimeter cube mole inverse second inverse so you have to write down the answer up to two decimal place okay so what are the information you can uh, get from here for diffusion control reaction okay so if two different species two different atoms are involved in the recombination process then it is nothing but 830 by 3 eta eta is nothing but the viscosity viscosity of the medium which is given over here but for similar kind of species okay so a plus a uh, recombination you can get it is kd equals to 480 by 3 pi 3 eta sorry now point is that for iodine it is a recombination of two iodine atoms so these are equivalent atoms so you, you will apply this formula 480 by 3 eta so what are the values given eta that means the value of the viscosity is already given you know the value of r you know the value of t just put it but over here the most important point is the unit change you have to focus on the units so in this case it's centipoise uh, centipoise 1 centipoise is 10 to the power minus 2 poise now one poise is 0.1 kg meter inverse second inverse these are some very important relations you must note it down in your copy these are very important relations you need to uh, remember these type of conversions so one poise equals to 0.1 kg meter inverse second inverse okay putting that you are getting 0.65 into 10 to the minus 3 kg per meter per second now why i uh, choose this in this form of the uh, poise because i can convert joule into kg per meter square per uh, per second square so in this way you can uh, get the expression for the rt one joule equals to one kg meter square per second square now if you uh, just calculate the value of rt it will be your 2494.2 kg meter square uh, per second square mole inverse now your next task is just uh, calculate the value of rt by eta eta is this one and rt has uh, uh, overall value this if you calculate this kg kg will cancel out and overall you are getting this one 3837.23 into 10 to the power 3 meter cube now 1 meter cube is nothing but 10 to the power 3 decimeter cube because in question they have asked in the form of decimeter cube okay decimeter cube mole inverse second inverse so you have to convert meter cube into decimeter cube so what you are actually getting this is 10 to the power 6 and uh, in the form of 10 to the power 8 so uh, in the form of 10 to the power 10 to the power 8 you are getting 38.3723 okay 38.3723 okay now the rt by eta has a value of 38.3723 you put it in the uh, in this equation kd so 4 by 3 into this one will be 51.163 so overall what you are actually getting it is up to two decimal place so it is 51.16 into 10 to the power 8 this one this unit so in this case what you should write it is 51.16 into 10 to the power 8 and this one decimeter cube mole inverse per second clear it's as simple as this fine so let's move on to our next question it is even more simple okay it is where uh, there's nothing in this a simple straight cut question they have asked that the calculate the quantum yield of the decomposition of hi so this is the step hi forming h and i okay this is the decom uh, decomposition step and another step is that hi forming so these two steps where hi is getting decomposed to other uh, species so you have to uh, determine the uh, quantum yield of that process now quantum yield is nothing but the rate of if you want to uh, get the quantum yield of any um, process so you have to calculate the rate of this process divided by the rate of the first step okay now it is an example of photochemical reaction so first step is always the absorption step primary step primary reaction occurs absorption so the first step over here h mu is given that means you are irradiating the hi molecule so it will absorb that one that amount of energy 
So the first step rate is uh, expressed in the form of IABS intensity. Okay, now rate of decomposition of HI, which is basically minus DHI by DT, is equals to now you can see that over here in the first step HI is getting decomposed, so the rate is nothing but IABS plus the second step. If you follow the second step here also, the HI is getting decomposed, so it is K1 into H in, into HI, the concentration of HI. Okay. Now over here this expression where in this case H is nothing but your intermediate and that intermediate uh, whenever there will be some intermediate so you can apply the steady state approximation with respect to that intermediate. So by applying steady, steady state approximation with respect to H that means DH DT which will be equals to 0 you are getting IABS equals to this one because now consider uh, in which step H is forming. This is the first step, IABS step H is forming, so it is positive. And in the second step, H is uh, getting uh, collapsed. So it will be minus K1 H HI. Okay, so from here you can get the value of IABS. Or rather, you can see that this K1 H uh, concentration of H into concentration of HI, you can express it in terms of IABS. So you can write it as total IABS plus IABS which will be basically 2 IABS. So this is the rate of the decomposition of HI. Now the first step was IABS and rate of decomposition of HI is 2 IABS. So quantum yield of the decomposition of HI will be the overall rate of the decomposition of HI divided by the rate of first step which is basically 2 IABS by IABS. IABS, IABS cancels out so you are getting 2. So 2 is your answer. So 2 will be your answer clear fine so let's move on to this question it says that p is forming q and r with rate constants k1 and k2 the values of k1 and k2 are already given okay and uh, at room temperature let's say that uh, what will be the concentration of the product r product r that means this one product r after 10 seconds of the reaction the initial concentration of p which is basically the reactant is 4 mole per liter that is 4 molar simply so round off up to 2 decimal place fine so what are the information we can get from here this is basically a parallel reaction a parallel reaction with the initial concentration of the reactant p0 which is basically 4 molar given okay initial concentration now k1 is given k2 is given and the expression of for the r any reagent you can uh, just determine this expression i have already given you this formula in the previous class okay chemical formula all the formulas of chemical kinetics have been already provided to you so please do watch that first okay please do watch that first revise those formula once and then watch this video and uh, solve the numericals with me as i have discussed how to approach the nat i have already made a separate video on that so do watch that uh, so carefully you have to think that how to actually apply those formula in your question. So this is the basically the formula what we are going to use. Okay, so in this case you can find out that this K1 plus K2 is nothing but 0.2 second inverse and T, T is given 10 seconds so it will be K1 plus K2 into T will be effectively 2. The value of 2 because second inverse second cancel out. You have to very uh, much carefully about the units as well. Okay, fine. So if you put this one k1 plus k2t as 2 and p0 is already given to you and other terms already uh, given provided so this will be your approximately 2.59 mole per liter so your answer is nothing but 2.59 which is already round off up to two decimal place okay it's very simple question uh, i think it was get uh, 2019 uh, 2019 or 20 2019 i think this question was asked if i am not wrong i am not sure whatever so this is uh, exactly the previous year's question uh, okay now this is the fifth question which actually say from P, p to q and q to r is forming the above reaction rate constants are 10 to the power minus 3 second inverse and 10 to the power minus 4 second inverse so first one has 10 to the power minus 3 second inverse and second one is 10 to the power minus 4 second inverse initial concentration of p is given so calculate at what time the concentration of Q and R will be. So this one 0.5966 and 0.0355 molar. 
so what is the what uh, at what time this will be uh, this uh, situation will arise now point is that what are the information you have gathered from here it is basically a consecutive reaction so over here you can find it as a consecutive reaction p to q to q to r and k1 and k2 values are already given to you and p0 which is the initial concentration of p is already provided so over here at t equals to 0 that means initially p has concentration some concentration is small a and uh, the concentrations of other two species will be zero and at some at some time at some point t uh, it has a concentration x and y uh, q is a concentration q has a concentration y and r has a concentration z so a is equals to x plus y plus z fine okay so from here you can find it out that p0 which is the initial concentration of p which will be a is equals to one one molar and y and z so at some time you are getting that the value of q and r which is basically y and z are basically 0.5966 and 0 0.0355 molar so from these three uh, expressions you can find out what is the value of x okay use, utilizing this formula now don't tell me that i haven't given you this formula these all formulas have been discussed in my previous lecture the all the formula of um, chemical kinetics i have given all the formula so the, so th that is already covered so the value of x is already given so x is nothing but the concentration of p at time t now you know that for consecutive reactions okay at consecutive reaction it actually follows the similar kinetics like first order reaction simple first order reaction um, with respect to the initial reactant so pt is equals to that means the t time concentration of p is equals to p0 initial concentration of t into e to the power minus kt k1t k1 is a react, uh, rate constant for the first step so if you follow this one that k1 has a value of minus 10 to the power 3 uh, second inverse and this is over here so it is 1 molar and it is 0 0.3679 uh, molar which is already determined over here so once you determine all this now it's much easier for you to determine the value of t just take a um, ln in both the side and you will get the, this will be the expression now from this uh, equation you are getting the value of t is 999.944 one one six nine something like this and uh, if you just uh, consider the closest integer the closest integer is uh, thousand so your answer will be thousand thousand second okay over here unit uh, should be given in second okay so calculate at what time so there will be in second this this will be already mentioned in your question uh, so the as per the question you will just uh, give you the answer okay so that's all for today these are five extremely important questions i have already discussed over here so what's your next task you will just uh, mark all the formula which have been used over here and mark in your note or just highlight them in your pdf file and those are important formulas which i have already used in this nat lecture series now your next task is that you need to solve each and every questions on your own without taking help from this video you will not watch this solution video at that time just try it on your own in this way you can practice practice with me um, it's uh, now uh, around only one month you have left okay effectively only january month is left so it's a peak hour you have to just uh, more and more practice is required you have to practice a lot so just uh, keep following canvas tutorial we will be making such videos more and more such videos but you need to subscribe it okay that's more that's more important uh, i need that inspiration from you if you if you do not subscribe then what will be my motivation so please do subscribe my channel if you like it then hit the like and uh, do subscribe thank you happy learning